so here is the um, NIST SP 863 B. Um, the, it discusses the strength of the memory secrets or memory passwords. Um, it shows that um, the the rules that we just discussed. Um, it says that the the rules are required um, to select passwords, uh, which includes mix of character types or at least one digit, uppercase letter, and symbols. So, so this is this is important uh, point highlighted here in red. That analysis of breach passwords databases reveal that the benefit of such roles such rules is not nearly as significant as initially thought. Although the impact on usability and mem um, um, memorization is severe. So, so they, therefore, because of this reason, and we saw in the in the that illustration on the slides as well. For this, this reason, a different and somewhat simpler approach based primarily on password length is uh, presented herein. So, um, and it, there is also important note that many attacks associated with the use of passwords are not affected by password complexity and length uh, because there are some type of attacks where the length and password complexity uh, does not matter to the attackers. Uh, for example, in keystroke keystroke logging, it's just um, whatever you type is being logged. So, um, so they are the same. The the complex and the weak passwords over there. Phishing, uh, as as we discussed earlier, that in the phishing, user believes that they are entering the password on a valid server, but um, so attackers load them through through emails as through some other links to enter their password so once they have the actual password no matter whether it uh, it's uh, complex um, developed by using all those rules or it's just a simple one it does not matter and social engineering attack so we'll discuss that as well in that the uh, the the outside channels are generally used and in one in one of the recent uber attacks the uh, um, the attackers were able to uh, get, get in touch with the system admins uh, through some social media channels and were able to get the um, passwords uh, so um, so there is this type of attacks are equally effective on length um, complex password as compared to the uh, simple ones so password length has been found to be a primary factor in characterization password strengths uh, passwords are um, that are too short yield to brute force attacks where uh, brute force attack mean where uh, uh, every possible combination could be tried against the as well as the dictionary attack using the words and commonly um, chosen passwords so um, the minimum password length length that should be required depends to a large extent on the threat model being addressed online attacks where the attacker attempts to log on by guessing the password can be mitigated by limiting the rate of login attempts permitted so for example generally you have seen that the um, after um, uh, two to th five attempts depending on the uh, depending on the um, significant of data being uh, protected the users are restricted uh, for some time and after every unsuccessful attempt that time window increases so here it says that in order to prevent an attacker or a persistent claim with poor typing skills from easily inflicting uh, a denial of service attack on the subscriber by make, making many incorrect guesses because the mm, if an attacker is uh, in this approach where the limiting uh, login limiting or the rate limiting is used so in that case after a fixed number of um, attempts um, the system will become inaccessible to the to the all users whether those are those are valid users or um, the hackers or the attackers in that case so that becomes a type of denial of service attack where denial of service mean the the service is being denied to a valid legit user uh, where it should not basically uh, sh should have been denied at that time 
So, mm, mm, so here it says parser needs to be complex enough and that rate limiting does not occur after a modest number of mm, erroneous attempts but does occur before there is a significant chance of successful uh, guess. So, mm, so it, here there is a trade-off. So, mm, so we need to take into account the, the persistent valid users with poor typing skills so that they, they are the valid users but um, they keep forgetting their password so they should be still be able to access the system um, but this should not allow um, other users to um, keep guessing. So system should not continuously present this opportunity to, um, to the users. Um, where they, the the success the guessing games keep, keep keeps on going. Okay, so that was the case for the online attacks. Mm, for the offline attacks, mm, basically the offline attacks are uh, possible when one or more hash passwords is obtained by the attacker through a database breach. This is one of the most common rules nowadays in the security um, area where passwords are not used as a plain text because if you store passwords in the database in a plain text and if there is a breach attacker is able to gain access to the database the whole system security the system will become vulnerable um, so uh, the hashing is done hashing we will discuss there is a one lecture on the hashing in cnrg 270 in this course so in the hashing we will see that uh, the it's a one way function only so um, the basically you provide a password, the hash function is applied, hash value is obtained, or hash, hash digest, it's called the hash digest. And the digest is the one which is stored in the database, hash digest. So um, whenever next time user is trying to authenticate, the same hash function is applied to the user supplied password, the digest is obtained and it's compared. So the, uh, the plain text passwords are not compared in the if statement. Like if the password is equal to the, the, this, then the, it's a success, otherwise it's not. So in that case, basically the, uh, the hash values or the hash digests are um, compared. So in this case, the uh, the the was the hash or the ability of the hacker to determine one or more user password depends on a way in which the password is stored. Um, commonly, passwords are salted. So salting is also an approach in which some additional characters are inserted into the. Um, stored password so that even if the um, even if the attacker is able to gain access to the um, salted version of the password they it will not be of any help to them mm, so mm, mm, salting hashing so these are very useful approaches for the storage only so basically hashing prevents the um, the storage. So there are there are two type of uh, places where you need protection in the cyber security. One is while the data is in transit. The other one is while the data is in storage. So the hashing is generally used for the um, for the storage where you need to store passwords and while the data is in transit. For example, on the wired medium or on the um, the wireless medium. Um, basically, in that case, the cryptographic approaches will be used. So, um, we'll keep discussing about the length, but before that, there are uh, um, some notations and conventions which are used in this document. If the document says that um, the shell and shall not, so that means that those should be followed strictly in order to conform to the publication. The publication mean here is the 863 and uh, no deviation from this one is permitted. Should and should not means that there are many possibilities and uh, one is recommended as suitable without uh, mentioning or excluding others. So others are still valid but the, the one which is being mentioned is um, recommended. So it's and the term may uh, need not indicate a course of action permissible within the limits of the uh, publication. The can and cannot indicates a possibility or capability, whether material, physical, or uh, basically in the in the absence of that possibility or capability could be uh, causal or, or the or the negative. So these are some of the shall, shall not, should, should not, may or need not, can and cannot. So you will see these um, in this. Uh, document. 
okay so um, let's see um, the 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 we, uh, we were discussing about the length we saw that salting and uh, the um, hashing values are used for the storage of the passwords um, um, the um, those are computationally expensive algorithms so require some time to um, uh, to calculate those so even with such measures the current ability of attackers to compute many billion hashes per second with no rate limiting requires password intended to resist such attacks to be orders of magnitude more complex than those are expected to resist only on the online attack so it's 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 serious because it says that since they have access to the the stored value there is no rate limiting in that case and it's an offline type type of the attack so um, here complexity would help in that sense uh, to protect board um, so the protect the authentication process so users should be encouraged to make their passwords as lengthy as they want um, within the reason since the size of the hash password is independent of its length so there is no correlation between the plain password and the hash digest so there is no reason not to permit the use of lengthy password or passphrases if the user wishes because if the the if you have used a four um, or for, let's say the 10 character length password or other user is using the 20 um, uh, character length password and hash digest is being stored as a 50 character so the both the 10 character length and the 20 character length will translate to the digest of the 50 so after in the case of the offline attack basically user won't be able to know that sorry the attacker won't be able to know that what's the um, length of the password um, so in that sense extremely long passwords um, such as megabytes in length could uh, conceivably require excessive processing time to hash so it's reasonable to have some limit because of the the computationally expensive algorithms that we uh, just discussed so um, so far we have discussed about the um, the, the sub rules um, on that um, that um, whether rules are beneficial or not, um, what are the criteria for the length of the password and what are the recommendations by the NIST that uh, what should be the length of the password and next one is the, um, the password complexity. So the, um, in that sense, in terms of the password complexity, uh, users should uh, be able to include uh, space characters to allow the use of phrases like on the, in that illustration on the slides you saw that the, uh, the the complete sentence had four phrases which are easier to remember and those were four separate phrases were concatenated using the uh, spaces mm -hmm. so mm, th th it's it's basically uh, the in the it's a measure to um, help the uh, to help remember the password spaces themselves however add little to the um, no value to the complexity of password and may introduce usability issues the undetected use of two spaces rather than one is one issue so it may be beneficial to remove repeated space in the type passwords prior to the uh, verification so that's one uh, recommendation and uh, there is another recommendation that um, some users password choices are very pre predictable so attackers are likely to guess passwords that have been successful in the past um, so the, there, there are criteria as well um, that which type of uh, basically is the if the profile the, there is a success against uh, a user by using password there is a likelihood that the same password could be used against the other user as well so um, these these include dictionary words password from previous breaches such as the password one example well, for this reason is recommended that um, the the password chosen by users be, com be, be compared against a blacklist of unacceptable uh, passwords uh, so nowadays most of the browsers um, offer this uh, um, the this uh, capability where uh, the um, uh, once you are typing a password once you are selecting a password uh, you will see that warning that this password has appeared in a in a data breach so um, the, it's it's not recommended to use this one uh, 
uh, or it's recommended to if if you have if you are already using that, it's recommended to change that password. Um, so in that this list should include passwords. The blacklist should include passwords from the previous breaches, dictionary words, specific words, um, dark web. Um, so nowadays most of the credit card companies also offer the um, this searching from the um, dark web as well where they look up for your uh, date of birth, name, email address, passwords, uh, credit card numbers on sale and so on and to, um, to give you. So the financial companies are, like these credit card companies are using that information to make their systems more secure and um, to stop the stealing of the uh, credit card numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so as we already discussed, highly complex memorized secrets introduce a new potential vulnerability. They are less likely to be memorable and it's more likely that they will be written down and stored electrically in one of the unsafe manner. So um, the either the the one uh, of these unsafe manner is that writing it on a sticky note and pasting it to, on your uh, screen as well. So that's that's one of the common thing that we have seen some of the time where the users were able to the attackers were able to get the written password from the from that sticky note. Uh, so the, the that's why the complex passwords are not recommended. Uh, sometimes the the users post their um, picture with their PC and on the sticky note there is the password written on the sticky note and the whole systems become um, compromised. Uh, so th this is uh, th therefore highly complex memorized secrets as per these documents are not uh, recommended. Um, okay so the uh, uh, next is the um, randomly chosen secrets. Um, the, another factor that determines the strength of memorized secret is the process by which they are generated. Secrets that are randomly chosen in most, most cases by the verifier or the CSP are uniformly distributed with, uh, will be more difficult to guess or brute force attack than the user chosen secret. Uh, so the use of randomly generated pins with six or more digits while requiring user chosen memorized memory secrets to be minimum of, of eight character long so pins should be six that's why whenever you see that um, uh, the, the the to verify those transactions to um, get access to a banking system you will get that six character pin and uh, the those secrets should be it so as discussed above the threat models being um, addressed with memory secret length requirement to rate limited online attacks uh, basically limiting the login attempts uh, but not within the limitation six digit randomly generated pins are still considered adequate for uh, memorized secrets to so summarize that um, Length and complexity requirement beyond those recommended here significantly increase the difficulty as memorized secrets and increase user frustration uh, So as user often work around these restriction in a way that is counterproductive for example other mitigations such as blacklist secure hash storage rate limiting are more effective at preventing modern brute force attacks um, so in summary the bottom line is that no additional complexity requirements um, are imposed okay so next we will discuss the authenticator and verify requirements as we showed that on the slide there are different type of authenticators so let's see what are what are the recommendations regarding those